Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Convertible bond, pure bond value versus market price problem number two. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if we'd like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, the Practice Problems tab down in the 1921 Convertible Bond, Pure Bond Value versus Market Price Problem Number 2 tab. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the Immersive Reader. Our presentations will be down in the text area as well with the same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, we have our information up top, calculation on down below. We're going to be looking at those convertible bonds again, those being the bonds that have the conversion option into some number of common stock. So we have the convertible bonds at the market price they're selling for. In other words, the 945, the par value is at 1,000, the coupon rate 9%. They mature in 21 years. They're going to be semi-annual bonds as well with regards to the income interest payments. The conversion price meaning we're going to be using the conversion price to kind of get to the conversion ratio to determine how many bond or how many stocks the bonds can be converted into. We have the common stock market price of the 36. So if we were to convert the bonds to the common stock, the common stock currently valued on the market at $36. They're semi-annual interest bonds and interest rate on the bonds that are similar but not convertible are yielding at the 12%. So once again, we got the convertible bonds. Convertible bonds are a bit confusing. They're a more complex type of security as opposed to the securities that are fairly straightforward, basic securities, which is the ones we love. That's the point of them being that way because it becomes easy and standardized for us to be able to value them, those being things like stocks and bonds. With this conversion feature, we have this kind of stock and bond type of thing, given the fact that we could convert the bond to stock and we could try to value this then by comparing it to the stocks that we can convert to or comparing them to bonds, for example, that don't have the conversion feature and then try to figure out the value of the ability to have that conversion feature, which is, of course, good generally for the stockholder because then they have the upside of being able to be open for the increase in the stock price going up, taking advantage then of the ability for the stock price to go up if they want to use the conversion or if not then they have the ability to keep and hold on to the bond resulting in the corporation usually being able to issue these bonds for a lesser rate uh, in order to finance possibly at a letter, lesser kind of interest rate given that option that is available which is beneficial to the investors okay so let's calculate the conversion value so first we want the conversion ratio which we can calculate using the conversion price. Remember that the conversion price is uh, in alignment with the par value. So we've calculated the conversion price in the past. If we get given the conversion price, we can use that to calculate the conversion ratio, which is basically the number of shares that we can get if we were to convert the bond to shares. So we're gonna be taking the $1,000 divided by the 38.46 on the conversion price. That's gonna give us our 26 about here so we got the 26 conversion ratio that's going to be the number of shares that we can convert the bonds into we have the common stock market price at 36 dollars. so if we were to convert the bonds to shares we'd, we would get 26 of them currently valued on the market which is easy for us to value because that is a standardized unit of stock which is nice because then that makes it easier for us to see what those are trading for at 36 that's going to give us the nine 36. So we got the valuation for the conversion value at the 936 looking at the stock side of this convertible bond. We then can look at the bond side of things with regards to the valuation of this bond. Now when we evaluate the bond, the typical way we value the bond and we have done so a lot in prior sections, we focus in on these calculations, they're going to be using present value calculations. We do them when we calculate the bonds. We've looked at them in general in their own section for present value calculations as well. So if you want to practice those, you can look at prior sections. We do calculate this in Excel as well using Excel to do so. So if you want to go to Excel, practice problem that we do here, uh, you can take a look at that as well. But we're just going to list out what we would do here generally. We're going to look at the bonds now, the bonds that don't have the convertible feature, because again, those are simplified the more standard kind of thing. It's good that they're simplified 
because that means that they're easier for us as investors to kind of get a handle on what the valuation of them are. So we got the present value of the interest payments that are going to be resulting, the present value of the face amount. We're looking at similar bonds that are yielding at the 12%. So we would be valuing the interest payments, the interest payments being a stream of payments that would be then the $1,000 times the, times the uh, coupon rate 0.09 divided by two because they're semi-annual. So we'd have 45 payments every six months for the 21 years that we can present value at the 12%. And then we can present value then the face amount of the bond, the $1,000 back at the 12% as well. That's how we would typically calculate the bond value, which we're going to call the pure bond value, as if once again, we didn't have the conversion feature because that's what we have to compare to. Then we can compare the, the conversion premium, which is taking a look at the bond market price, which is currently at the 945. That's what their, our bonds are selling for with this conversion feature. Compare that to the conversion value. That's the value that we calculated as if we converted the bonds to stocks. Then comparing those two out means that we have a difference of a conversion premium of $9. We basically paid $9 over what the conversion value would be and so i and again if that that's at this point in time obviously things could change in the future because the idea is we don't know what's going to happen of course to the stock price it could go, it could do whatever it's going to do go up or down this would be what the case would be as of basically today then we got the difference in the pure bond value and the market price so we could also take a look at the the bond market price, which is that 945 compared to the pure bond value, which we calculated up above the difference between those two is the 173.37. So we can take a look at that side of things as well. We can look at the, we can also think about the convertible bond yield, meaning we might also think, well, this 12% is what other bonds without the, without the conversion are yielding. What rate would this be? at this market price in other words what rate would result in basically this market price and we can kind of back into that calculation this is something we do in the bond section uh, more as well but in essence and it's kind of complicated to do mathematically but with present value calculations a calculator or excel fairly easy to do we do the, do this in excel with you but the idea would be then that we we're at the nine percent that would be our starting point for the interest rate and then we would be calculating our present value of the interest payments and the present value of the face amount in the same way as we saw up above and then take and change this interest rate to the rate that would result in the ending value of the bond equaling the market price of the bond and that would give us basically our, our interest rate for that as well and so we can back into that we could use a tool called goal seek basically to do that in excel if you want to check that out we do work that problem out in excel but in essence that would get us to the 961 uh, percent 9.61 percent being the rate at which the calculation of the of the bond value would be uh, equal to the market price of the 945. so once again these are different ways that we can take this kind of complex security which there isn't really a market for there's no other we don't have other standardized securities like this trading currently on the market so it's difficult for us to determine what the market values them to be we do have securities that are trading that are stocks currently trading and we know exactly what they're trading for because those are simplified securities that are trading and so we can see what those are and we do know what the bonds are trading for that are similar in nature to these bonds so we can kind of take a look at those both of those sides of the more simplified type of security and try to back into what we believe the value of a more complex security with a conversion option would be.